Hey Rutgers, welcome back for the fall 2017 semester. I'm Dan King. And I'm Karina Gonzalez. We've been back on campus for a couple weeks now. And now that everyone's settled in, we're here to give you the inside scoop on everything happening on the Rutgers campuses. In this episode, we have a lot in store for you. From taking you to a night of traditional Korean dance, all the way to new discoveries about space and what's in store for the future. Ooh, sounds interesting. I actually can't wait to see them all. Let's start the show by getting a look at the Livingston campus with new and returning students and their goals they have for this fall 2017 semester. Hey Rutgers, welcome back to the fall 2017 semester. I'm here at the Livingston Plaza to check up on the students and see what they have going on this upcoming school year. Well, welcome back to the school year. And what are you most excited about this fall? Honestly, I'm excited for the fall weather. Um, I really like the fact that it's not like 90 degrees anymore, <laughs> but just to see people, uh, see old friends. So what are you most excited about coming back to Rutgers? Uh, hopefully getting a 4.0 at the end of the semester and then getting to see my friends for my, my last year here at Rutgers. What are your um, upcoming goals for the end of the semester? Uh, hopefully to reach Dean's list. I mean, I graduate in, in the spring, so hopefully to get a job by the end of the fall semester for after school ends. Uh, I'm hoping to end with a good GPA and uh, just to have fun, meet some new people, and enjoy my first year. Um, so what are your end of the semester goals for this fall? I'm actually graduating this semester, so I hope that I can either get into a graduate program or get a job right after college. I plan to finish this semester with a high GPA and make a lot of friends. Ooh, those are my goals too. I'm basically trying to achieve a 3.8. Um, I'm also graduating this semester, so that really helped me uh, get my GPA up. What events are you guys looking forward to the most this year? Uh, my favorite thing in the fall is to go to all the football games. Uh, football is one of my favorite sports and hopefully this year Rutgers can do even better than last year. I'm most excited about King Neptune night because I'm a big seafood fan. Uh, really looking forward to the lobster. What are you most excited about coming back to Rutgers? Actually, I think that the student organizations here on campus are the most exciting thing to come back to every year. I love getting with my people and just having fun, coming together for events and stuff. All right, Rutgers, I don't know about you guys, but I'm definitely excited for this upcoming school year. I wish you guys all the best of luck. This is Karina Gonzalez, RUTV. Well, you heard a bit about my back to school goals when I was interviewing those students, but I'm still aiming to get um, Dean's List this semester and also make sure I get an A in both of my Spanish classes. How about you? Um, I managed to get Dean's List last semester, and I'm hoping to stay on that, hopefully. <laughs> um, I'm also taking a lot of writing courses this semester, and I'm hoping to stay on top of all the papers that I got. Yeah, I feel the same way. I'm just making sure I'm going to have a great attitude this semester and make sure I maintain that high GPA I need. I have the exact same motivations and goals. I'm hoping I can do the same, and I also know that it's good to take a break and relax when you can. Exactly. Yeah, and a great way to relax is just to sit down, watch some shows, and maybe some live performances. Over the summer, RUTV headed over to Mason Gross for a night of traditional Korean dance with the Kookman Theater. Check it out.
performances were amazing. I'm not really the type of person to go out and watch live performances all the time, but I did make time to go see Kookman Theater in person. Also, over the summer with my family, I got to see The Lion King and The Phantom of the Opera on Broadway. Wow, this is actually really cool. I've always wanted to go see that. I've been to a couple live shows, like exactly like the ones at the Crossroad Theater by George Street. It's amazing how they use their props and even their costumes to make the setting a lot more realistic. Yeah, honestly, I haven't really had the time to go see them, but after seeing all these, I really have to make time to go see more. Exactly. We're going to take a short break. Stay with us. We'll be back right after this. As a commuter, it's hard to make connections outside of class. Tell me about it. Did you know that there's a place for commuters to meet up between classes? Hmm. No, I didn't. That's right. The Rutgers Commuter Student Organization's primary goal is to serve commuter needs and interests while building a bigger commuter community on campus. Located in the Bush Student Center, the RCSA Commuter Lounge has many appliances that help make commuter lives easier, such as a microwave, a refrigerator, computers, and even a TV. The RCSA also holds events. It's the perfect place to relax, do homework, and make some friends. Don't have classes on Bush? Don't worry, there is a new commuter lounge in the Douglas Student Center as well. The commuter lounges are open every Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. and from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Fridays. For more information, visit rcsa.rutgers.edu. Oh, I, I just, I, I don't know, man. I don't know if I can run today. I'm really busy and, wait, what? You're running there? I did not know this. I didn't even know that was a place. Do you know all the places on campus where you can work out and exercise? Well, we do, and we want to share that with you. Werblin Recreation Center is located on Bush Campus on the corner of Freelingheisen and Bartholomew Road. Werblin has everything from badminton courts to an Olympic-sized swimming pool. The Livingston Recreation Center is located on Road 3 off of Joyce Kilmer Avenue. This center has a full weight room, hosts many different classes, and even has a spa located right inside to help you relax after a tough workout or maybe just a tough exam. The Cook Douglas Recreation Center is located on Beale Road across from the Cook Student Center. This recreation building comes equipped with a fun fitness center pool, and racquetball courts for those of you who like sports with a little danger. The College Avenue Gym is located directly on College Avenue, right next to the Student Center. This location has multiple gyms and basketball courts, power and conditioning rooms, and is the only location with a rock wall. The Rutgers Fitness Center is located on Easton Avenue on the College Avenue campus. This is the only location that is just a fitness center so this might be the place for people looking to just work with weights and machines. Rutgers also has multiple bike and walking paths that run throughout all the campuses. You can find a map of all the paths at rudocs.rutgers.edu slash bikewalk. Most facilities are open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. until 11.30 p.m. Weekend hours vary, but you can find out more information about the facilities and their hours at recreation.rutgers.edu. Welcome back to this episode of Inside Rutgers. You know as a research university, Rutgers is always brimming with activity, whether it be in the lab or out in the field. Exactly. It's one of those things that makes Rutgers such a great university. You know, over the summer a few weeks ago, I was actually in a research lab with Sonia Tiku, a researcher who studies rocks from the moon. Wow, that's actually really cool. I wish I was there, but at least RUTV recorded it. Let's check out how it went for Sonia Tiku as she did her research this past summer. My name is Sonia Tiku. I'm an assistant professor of planetary sciences at Rutgers University in the Department of Earth and Planetary Sciences. So starting in 1969, the US government was sending astronauts to the moon during the Apollo missions. And when the astronauts were on the moon, they collected a bunch of moon rocks. And so my moon rock was collected as part of the Apollo 15 mission which landed on the moon. So here's the moon, and uh, here we have this big lava flow called Mare Imbrium, and we have uh, the Apollo 15 landing site right here at the edge of this lava plain.
The fact that we identified a magnetic record this late in lunar history, this tells us that even small bodies like the moon can generate super long magnetic fields. The new uh, cool thing about this study was this was the first time we were able to successfully heat a moon rock using a special controlled atmosphere environment uh, to retrieve a stable lunar magnetic record. This is the first heating study that actually worked. What this tells us is that we need to investigate new avenues for where energy can come from in the core. Uh, possibly from core crystallization, which may relate to what the core is actually made out of. I think what this study is going to motivate us to do is to uh, expand our research into these heating techniques to try to perfect them and apply them to other lunar samples. So the Earth's magnetic field, for example, provides an invisible shield around our planet that protects us from dangerous solar wind particles and ionizing radiation. So you can imagine that if the Earth didn't have a magnetic field, we would be exposed to all of these hazards. And that could induce genetic mutations and generally create a harmful environment for life. And so whenever we look at other planetary bodies, we want to see what kinds of planets can generate long-lived magnetic fields that can last long enough to protect life over a very long time scale. It definitely leaves open the possibility of life being protected in many other places in the universe. Wow, that's actually really cool. I can't wait to see how far the research will take them. Yeah, it's actually crazy that research this big happens at Rutgers. I'm always taken by surprise because I forget something this crazy happens at our school. Speaking of cool things that are coming from Rutgers, our new chancellor took time to interact with the student body of Rutgers as well as the people of New Brunswick. Let's check it out. Community engagement is critically important for a public university. And for me to be a part of it, I hope it communicates that it is something we take very seriously. My name is Deva Dutta, and I'm the new chancellor of Rutgers University in New Brunswick. We were participating in the Good Neighbor program, which is a wonderful program. Met a lot of students uh, who were volunteering. That's a good thing. Met several students who are in off-campus housing, some uh, New Brunswick residents, I got to see uh, how the university and the community actually come together. Of the 52,000 students that we have at Rutgers New Brunswick, about 10,000 or so are in the New Brunswick community. The goal was to improve, enhance relationships of the university with the community. I think that continues to be a goal. I think it sends a message that Rutgers is, has just a good sense of community. So it's just nice to see like the chancellor out here greeting people. It just like kind of gives a friendly vibe. It is my style. I have been very hands-on in every institution that I've had. And we have to understand that universities exist for students. So it is a hands-on approach. I plan to be that. I've been that. So it was a great opportunity for me to know about the community, about our students and the residents of New Brunswick. It's great to see that Chancellor Dutta is so proactive of keeping up with the people of New Brunswick and the student body. I know, it's actually really nice to know that someone that's so busy is actually taking his time out of the day to make sure that the community is going great. Well, we're going to take a quick break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Did you lose your ID? Not sure of what to do? First, send an email to lostcard at aps.rutgers.edu to suspend your card so no one else can use it. Next, visit one of the RU Connection offices to have your lost or stolen ID card replaced. There is an office located on every campus. 
Records Hall on College Avenue is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. The Bush, Cook Douglas, and Livingston Campus Housing Offices are open Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 5 p.m. The Public Safety Card Office is open from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. You will need to pay for your new ID with $20 in RU Express. If you don't have RU Express, you can go to the cashier's office next to Records Hall before getting a new ID. Make sure to provide a form of unexpired government-issued photo identification when asking for a new ID. It's that easy to replace your ID. Make sure to keep it in a safe place so you don't lose it again. For more information and a more detailed explanation, visit pst.rutgers.edu slash rules.php. What are you doing? You've been on this couch all weekend. Don't you want to go out and have some fun? And what exactly am I supposed to do? And you've been eating these processed foods all day. Aren't you tired of it? Listen, pal, I gotta eat. I'm glad you said so. Now that you're out and about, you have plenty of options to satisfy your hunger. If you're feeling retro, try Henry's Diner. You can get a burger, a sandwich, salad, and much more at any time. Wait, 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 wait. You mean I can get a burger at 9 a.m.? Yes, you can. You can even satisfy your sweet tooth. Starbucks has the perfect pick-me-up for you. You can order a coffee, cappuccino, frappuccino, and much more. You'll stay refreshed and caffeinated all day long. If you're in the mood for something more exotic, then stop on over to Hoja Asian Fusion. Well, I am craving an egg roll. Well, you're in luck, because Hoja Asian Fusion not only serves that, but General Chow's chicken, sweet and sour fish, and bubble tea. So that sounds great and all. What if I want something quick? Then go to Kilmer's Market. Kilmer's Market takes eating to a whole new level with healthier food options and meals made just for you. Craving something zesty? Cajoba will melt in your mouth with quesadillas, burritos, tacos, salads, and much more. Reward yourself after class with a delicious dairy treat from 16 Handles. You can choose from 16 flavors and top it off with cookie dough bites, strawberries, or sprinkles. Whether you need a repair or want to buy new, Kite and Key is a store here on campus ready for your tech needs. One problem. I'm a broke college kid. I can't afford any of this. Well, no need to fear. Kite and Key has a student discount. You can escape reality for a few hours right here on campus at the Rutgers Cinema. Ticket prices are $7 for students with an ID, and without an ID, it's $9.50. Hey, thanks for taking me to the Livingston Plaza. I feel much better. Hey, trying to watch the movie. For more information on the Livingston Plaza, visit theplaza.rutgers.edu. Get off your couch and go have some fun. Thanks for staying with us. If you're just tuning in, we're giving you the latest on everything Rutgers. I'm so proud to be a Rutgers student, and it makes me even happier to know that I go to a school where students' values are getting involved. Yeah, I love being a part of a student community where everyone's so proactive. Um, speaking of proactive people, today we highlight Ryan Hauser, one of these outgoing students. Let's check out our shining knight, Ryan Hauser. I'm currently a senior in the School of Arts and Sciences, majoring in psychology. I've been an EMT for five years now. When I was in high school, I was looking for an opportunity to help in the community. Um, this was one of the few opportunities that you had as a high schooler to get involved. Um, so as soon as I could start, which is when you're 16, I started um, and I kind of fell in love with everything and, and wanted to do more. It's definitely an experience um, and a very touching one to, to be able to be there for everyone. You know, the, the two towns I started volunteering for when I first started were kind of tight-knit communities so you really get to meet people and you know, people start to recognize you and I think a lot of people appreciate the things that um, first responders do, whether it's police, fire, EMS, 
Um, the job is definitely difficult for everyone, so it is nice that people appreciate what we do and see what goes into it. You can't really explain the feeling that you get, and it makes you just want to do it more and more often, so that's why I've kind of continued picking up different jobs so I can continue to do more um, and have more patient contact, because that's really what everything that we do is about. It's about the people that we serve. So I was recognized as the uh, National EMT of the Year by the National Association of EMTs and EMS World. Um, so I was nominated by a past member of our organization and I was selected in August and I'll be receiving my award in October. For me, that's one of the main reasons I decided to commute to Rutgers. That way I could still continue to do my volunteer work at home. You know, I've kind of worked my class schedules around my volunteer opportunities to make sure I can still run my shift. It's definitely a, a great opportunity no matter what you volunteer to do. If you can fit it in your schedule, um, it's definitely worthwhile to be able to help someone and know that you're making a difference in someone's life is uh, definitely very rewarding. Um, I hope to go to medical school to continue in the medical field, kind of increasing you know, my knowledge and my abilities to be able to help people more than I am now. You know, not every day offers you the opportunity to save a life, but every day offers you the opportunity to touch one. Um, so if that's something that you find you know, appealing and you want to be able to help people, then EMS is definitely one of the ways to go. I'm always surprised to see how much Rutgers students can accomplish. Like Ryan Hauser does so much. Yeah, he does so much around campus. Rutgers actually has so many opportunities to be involved. Speaking of being involved, are you in any clubs? Yes, I'm the current president of Douglas Divas. It's a multicultural women's empowerment organization. How about you? Sadly, I don't have any clubs under my belt, but I really need to start looking because Rutgers has so many interesting ones. Yes, they have a lot of different opportunities for students, and I can understand it takes a full investment to be a part of a club. Well, I think it's time to take a break. We'll be back with more Inside Rutgers after this. Do you like kicking back in your free time? Sometimes the dorms can get stuffy and boring. So head on over to the Rutgers Zone. Need somewhere to watch sports? Need to satisfy that ice cream craving? Or are you tired of your old video games? Rutgers Zone is where you need to visit. Enjoy some games, food, TV, karaoke, and so much more. And don't forget to ask for those ice cream toppings. With all of the cool things at the Rutgers Zone, why would you even leave? If you are on Livingston campus, make sure you swing by the Rutgers Zone, just a bus stop away. For more information, please visit zone.ruckers.edu. Welcome back, Rutgers. We've been back on campus for a couple weeks now, and I'm starting to notice a lot of people are coughing and sneezing in my classes. Yes, fall allergy season's right around the corner, but luckily there's ways to help treat your allergies here at Rutgers. Oh my god, hey! Did you mean a tissue? Yeah, thank you so much! Ugh, okay. No problem, I get allergies all year, so I always have tissues on me. Wow, that really sucks. I wonder who else gets allergies all year round. Me too. Did you know that one in every five Americans has some form of allergies? Seasonal allergies are not just in the spring. There are actually allergens for every season throughout the year. In the fall, it is ragweed and mold. Mold tends to be worse as it gets colder and colder. In the winter, it is dust mites because you are more likely to spend time indoors when it is cold out. In the spring, it is pollen from plants such as trees and flowers. And in the summer, it is grass pollen, weeds, and if you are in the southern states, mold can play a factor. Seasonal allergies are also affected by the weather. Warm, dry, and windy weather causes allergens to circulate more. A relatively warm winter can mean an early start to the allergy season. If the mild conditions continue into spring, allergies will be the worst early in the season. Wow, I didn't know that many things cause seasonal allergies. Yeah, no matter the season, you should always keep tissues handy because you'll never know when you need them. It's crazy to see how many people start getting sick when we're all back on campus. I know a lot of my friends are getting sick, so I'm hoping I don't get sick for our next episode. Well, that is all we have for this episode of Inside Rockers. Please be sure to let us know if you enjoyed the show and if you have any comments or suggestions for our next show. You can tweet us at Rockers TV. And remember, if you missed any parts of this episode or any past episodes, you can check us out online at rutv.rockers.edu and on our YouTube channel. I'm Karina Gonzalez. And I'm Dan King. We'll see you next time.